Tuesday is Struggling with Tranquil Tuesdays, and today I'm going to talk about is older tea better with poor tea? It's a common question and source of mystery. Um, you might have heard some crazy stories about people paying tens of thousands of dollars for a 1950s or 1960s Bing Cha, the pressed poor tea discs. Um, you might have heard stories of people trading futures and spending un obscene amounts of money on certain vintages of older poor tea. And I think these stories kind of give an aura and a, a sense or feeling that older tea is better in poor tea. And my answer to that, the short answer to is older tea better in poor tea is not necessarily. <laughs> I will go into the details of why or what that means. Um, this is the fourth video in a series of four videos I've made about poor tea. I encourage you to watch the first three uh, first because they build on each other in knowledge. And so I would say go watch those now first if you haven't seen them already. And like the last video, I'm going to be doing another steeping of the same Shung Poor Tea I made in two videos ago. So the last video I did the second steeping. Now I'm doing the third steeping. Uh, this is a Shung Loose Leaf Pour. It's actually an ancient tr wild tree pour. After two steepings, the leaves are already pretty open. You can see the leaves are pretty big. I don't know if you can really see it there. Um, well, I put about one tablespoon in this Yixing teapot and I am now adding some hot boiling water for the third steeping. And like we've talked about in other previous videos, with a high quality tea, you're able to get multiple steepings. Um, I encourage you to watch that video. And so while this is brewing, I just want to review one of the uh, concepts we talked about in the last video about Sheng Pour Shen versus Shou Pour and um, aging versus fermentation. So one of the reasons why Sheng, an, a, an aged Sheng Pour is so prized is because in the process of aging, oftentimes the tea will develop a more complex flavor. And this complexity is the interaction of, of four different factors. It is the humidity, the temperature that it is stored in. It is, and sometimes the yeast and the bacteria in the storage environment and how they all interact together and over time create a more complex or mellowed flavor in the shampoo. All right, I'm gonna decant this now. Did you see the color is still pretty, pretty robust for a third steeping? That is a nice, nice color. Mm. So on the first steeping, I felt the flavors were very earthy and sort of mushroomy. The second steeping, I really felt the flavors became a little, the wood notes became more prominent, like the kind of woodsy, camphory. So let's see what the third steeping is. I'm tasting, I'm, I'm smelling mushroom again. Mushrooms come back on the third. I'm gonna let it, for it sit for a second because it was very hot water. Um, so I just, we mentioned those four elements that uh, contribute to the oftentimes more complex and prized flavor that happens to Shung Pu'er over aging. But those four elements need to be managed and controlled by someone who knows what they're doing. Because just because it's getting older doesn't mean it's getting better, right? Like if you are properly managing those four elements of humidity, temperature, yeast, and bacteria, you could, in, in its own artful way, bring out the best of a tea as it's aging. You could also not manage those four elements well and the tea will deteriorate over time. Oh, I definitely feel like 
now the flavor the most pronounced one is actually at this camper quality. Oh, that's really nice. Yeah, it's definitely like a camper. Like the earthiness has definitely died down a lot. The woodsiness is still there as like a background note, but like the camper, the camper is really out on this third steeping. Um, and the flavor is still very vibrant and alive. It's not watered down at all yet. Uh, so like I said, you can age it well and enhance the flavors with more complexity over time, or you can not age it well and maybe the flavors actually taste worse. So in that example, right, you could have a very well aged tea that was managed by someone who knows what they're doing, that's 10 years old, that's going to taste better and be better, a better quality than a 30 or 40 year old tea that was not managed well and not aged well. So that's one example of why an older tea is not necessarily better. Um, the other thing that I want to talk about is I think the most important thing in any quality tea of what makes the tea good or not is how the tea was grown, you know, the, the terroir and the conditions of its growing and how, how well the plant was cared for, and the craftsmanship in which, in which the tea was transformed from a fresh tea into a, a fresh leaf into a finished tea. And those two um, factors really are the, I think, the most important and crucial part of what makes a tea good or better. So in that situation, you could have a tea that had really great high quality leaves from a year in which the terroir and the water and everything came together in a perfect symbiosis. Um, and it was made by someone who really knows what they're doing. And then that tea is maybe five or seven years old. That's going to be better than a tea that was from lower quality leaves, not as well made, but is 40 years old. So that's another situation in which older is not necessarily better. So the other thing is I really want to emphasize that the art of aging a tea is much more than it just being old, right? If you think about uh, like a cigar, like, you know, a fine Cuban cigar, they have a, a humidor that it's stored in, right? And it's stored in like a specially controlled humidity and temperature. And unless you're bringing that kind of energy to your tens of thousands of dollar 40 or 50 year old tea, poor tea, I'm not sure you're going to get that same quality of an aged tea that you're hoping for. So I hope you understand why my answer to is older better and poor tea is not necessarily because I think the three things you really need to think about is how was it stored and aged? What are the quality of the leaves to begin with? And what's the artistry and the craftsmanship of the person or people or workshop transforming that loose leaf tea, that loose leaf or the freshly picked tea into the finished tea product. So I think if you evaluate on those three um, factors, that will give you a better indication of if a tea is better or good versus whether or not it's just old. So that is the conclusion of our four part Who Are Tea series. If you still have questions, please leave a comment below. Um, I'm happy to keep on talking about Who Are Tea, but I hope this series helped you further understand and demystify <coughs> one of the most misunderstood teas and then one of the most polarizing teas. And yeah, give you better and more understanding and confidence to approach and core tea. Thanks for watching. And again, if you have comments or questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you.